I just uh, wanted to let you know out of the gate here that every day till the end of September, I'm giving away a Life's Better When You Make Stuff shirt over on my Instagram. And all you gotta do is post a photo about what you're working on and tag me. And I'm giving away shirts to raise attention about our Make Stuff grants where we are giving away $1,500 of cash to spend on whatever you want. How do you get a Make Stuff grant? You might be asking, will you join our Make Stuff challenge by making something? So we're challenging you to make and submit a video using a song from Musicbed. They have a free trial and we now have extended the deadline to the end of September till the 31st. So you've got more time to work on it. I'm very excited about this. I wanna see videos that you submit to the challenge. The theme this year is oh so pertinent to this video. And no, if you're wondering, I did not put gas in my diesel sprinter van, but uh, we'll get back to this in a moment. Let me tell you about a $5,000 mistake I made in this video. <coughs> you know that feeling when something really bad happens and your stomach just drops because you're right in the middle of it and you haven't quite figured out how you're gonna solve it quite yet? Now let's just get right to the point. If you're one of those people that when you click on a video you wanna know the answer to the title immediately, I understand. So the mistake that I made is the choice behind a mission critical piece of hardware and my not preparedness for it to fail in a specific certain way that I did not anticipate. That is my mistake. Skip to this timestamp if you wanna see which piece of hardware this is, but I assure you this experience as a viewing story is better when I tell you first what the mission actually is and then the critical piece that failed in that mission. So the mission I've been on since day one when I bought this empty cargo van five years ago has finally been achieved. The dream was to do my filming work on location for condensed periods, and then hit the road and work from wherever for months at a time. No need to plug into power, no need to stop for a place to stay, a home on wheels that is fully mobile and entirely functional. And for the last few weeks, we've been living out that dream. My wife and our beautiful daughter have been able to hit the road and come see some family for some much needed connection time. While here visiting family, I can sneak away and be really productive in this van that we've built. But occasionally, you bump into small hiccups with your dream. And this video is a story about a current hiccup that I'm trying to deal with and what it is teaching me. Now, part of what comes with doing professional video work is lots and lots of storage. We're talking terabytes upon terabytes upon lots of terabytes. In order to make my mobile nomadic lifestyle work, I often shoot multiple client projects, usually outdoor adventure stuff, for my clients in the same condensed period. Now, I don't share with you every single client project I'm working on, frankly, because making videos while making videos about making videos is, is really challenging. Now, let's just say this red water right here is all of the media that I shot after a client project is over. So I've got this massive amount of, of data. Let's just say a little, jar like this is your typical laptop storage. Let's say it's an SSD, it's nice and fast. So I can do my YouTube stuff, multiple videos at a time on my internal drive on my laptop, but I've gotta find a way to store a lot of these big bad boys again, because that's how I'm making my money to pay for this and then hit the road and just go edit from wherever I want. One of the ways you can carry with you a ton of data and be able to access it quickly is through using a device that allows you to set up, this is hard to do with one hand, multiple, do I have to set this down? Multiple. Multiple drives combined into a RAID array. Some setups you can optimize for the fastest speed, but then you don't have any redundancy. I like to have a little redundancy in my life because things fail, hard drives fail. I say this all the time and I feel like I'm ranting on Twitter, but just because you have something copied to an external drive does not make it a backup. So just because you have your files on an external drive, that is not a backup. My favorite RAID configuration looks like this. If this is our media, we were gonna start importing it into the RAID. What the RAID would do is separate it out into multiple drives, but it would overfill each drive slightly so that way they're all sharing some of the contents of the other. 
Now, the reason why this setup is awesome is that you can store lots of projects that are massive in size. So for instance, my 36 terabyte editing RAID, I can store five, six, seven, eight client projects, tons of my films. I can be working on so many projects at the same time, which is ideal for me. So I'm not constantly moving around files. It's just all right there for me to access quickly because all the drives are working together to get you that data so you can access the files quicker than just on one single spinning hard drive where you're waiting for it to physically turn around. Let's say a drive's got an issue. Some of the data is freaking out on one of these drives and maybe some unforeseen circumstance. <laughs> They can just, they can just break. See, that's the beauty of RAID. If one of your drives fail, you can put in a new drive and all these other ones have just enough of your other files that nothing is missing and we're back to normal. You might be thinking at this point in the video, okay, Levi, time to get to the point. What's the mistake you made? The mistake I made is multiple. The first one being investing in this piece of technology over here to be my RAID setup. So in order to do that magic cup splitting out thing that RAID devices can do to share your data, there's a physical controller inside of this box that does that. And what happened this week of, of literally of all weeks, most weeks I could manage to work around this easier than now, but I was rendering out a project that we've been editing for the last month and suddenly my drives disconnect. And after <laughs> literally hours of problem solving and we'll touch on customer service in a sec because that's its own entire journey and experience. Uh, I come to realize that the physical chassis of the drives is faulty, not working, something is wrong with it. And the issue here is that in order to read the drives that are in here, I need an exact model duplicate of this unit in order to read my drives because each manufacturer's RAID controller is different unless it's done through software. So the physical RAID controllers, which are the fastest and most reliable, if those fail, you need to find the same RAID controller in order to read your drives. And I had not anticipated or planned for how difficult it would be to find a replacement chassis for my drives anywhere in all of Canada. How does a mistake like this happen? Complete oversight on my part as the user. And this is a big struggle for me this week because there's so much work I've been doing behind the scenes editing that was all about to come out currently. We shot a documentary with the new A7S Mark III and a massive behind the scenes video of it. I have not one, but three current client projects that are underway that I've been doing work on that my clients are expecting. One of those was supposed to launch this week. And I have my YouTube videos. We're, we're currently running the Make Stuff Challenge and I had behind the scenes content planning to go out and I was gonna like have all this fun stuff going on. And the reason why those projects are held hostage currently in here and the reason why the stakes feel so high to try read this data once more is because Tell you what I, did, did a bad thing. I have backups of the media, the footage that was originally sh shot itself. I have those physical backups back in British Columbia. I can, I can get those to me. That is not as much of a problem, but what the problem is in a mistake that I've made is that my editing software, I was having the auto saves be saved where the project was and the project was existing on this drive. And I made that decision probably absentmindedly, but I just assumed it's on a drive where there's redundancy. I, if, if the drive fails, I put a new drive in, my edits will always be saved next to the project. I was trying to be clean and manage my data well. Just because you have something copied to an external drive does not make it a backup. But if I had made the decision to save those autosaves onto my laptop to solve the problem I'm currently in, all I would have to do is expedite the backups that I have off location to me here, reconnect them into a new multi-raid device of some kind that I could track down. It doesn't have to be this exact model. I could load those autosaved edits back up, reconnect the footage, and I don't lose that month of work that I did. But because I was saving my auto saves next to the product files, which were on this device, that last month of work that I did might all be lost. When that happens earlier this week, I'm just immediately, my stomach just drops. Like I, it's, it's, it's the worst 
it's the worst thing that I could imagine happening as someone trying to do remote work, aside from someone breaking into the van and stealing everything out, which again, I should probably have better uh, processes in place to deal with that kind of issue if that happens. So quickly in a blanket way, how would I problem solve for this going forward in the future? How would I have done this differently? Redundantly have my current editing files being backed up in a different way. And two, if I was gonna be relying on any kind of editing raid for current up-to-date stuff, I would make sure I wouldn't have bought one that was this premium, this expensive. I would have bought one that was cheaper that could do the same thing and bought two of the chassis. So that way, if I have a chassis failure on top of a drive failure, I can swap the drives from one chassis into the other. As I wrap up uh, the edit on the video here this morning, I am finding myself asking the question of what exactly is the point of the video I'm making and, and why is it so long and is all that really actually that helpful? And if you're still here with me, awesome, that's great. I guess the reason why I'm making a video like this is that I make sure uh, the, the stuff I just put out onto the internet also has the spectrum of some of the different kinds of problems that you can run into when you're trying to make this lifestyle work. This video that you're watching right now is connected to a server room somewhere owned by Google playing off a spinning hard drive in a stack of hard drives. And if one of those drives fail or that rack fails, there is parts available to replace those units, to fix them. Data storage solutions on the enterprise level are ubiquitous for our modern age. And I think I can make a better decision in this realm going forward. I was under the impression that the kind of tool I was getting was one that parts and other units would be around. <laughs> that was kind of just what I thought. And I went with more of a niche specialized tool to do more of this rugged, it's, it, it's kind of advertised as this more built up, tougher unit that's a, a step beyond consumer and ready for that production lifestyle. And when I had bought this from the Apple store, I paid over $5,000 for it and it was in stock. Now when I go to the Apple store, they're saying they're not even carrying it anymore which is a massive red flag for me. Like, why did they stop carrying it? It's not like there's a newer version that has come out in the meantime. Maybe I should just mention, uh, as I'm going into problem solve my unit, I've realized on the website, there's no user manual for my model. <laughs> that is mind blowing to me. A $5,000 hard drive with no user manual. <laughs> that is just, I don't know, maybe I'm asking too much, you know, for a manual that can tell me how, what the lights mean. And in the forum, there's like staff that are responding to people asking questions being like, uh, the user manual from two models previously, you can reference that one, but it's just like, come on, there's gotta be. If I had gone with a more mainstream enterprise solution, being able to find parts in whatever main city I am would be a lot more, a lot more possible. As I was going back and forth with reps and my likelihood of finding a solution in a time frame that was before the weekend or even in the week after, I started to kind of panic and I was searching frantically online for any unit that I could buy that was identical to mine so that way I could take my drives out and put it into it. That was not looking like a thing. And to be frank, we are we're out there. On a scale to one to the boonies, we're at about a seven. Our cell service out here sucks. Our our internet speeds are are painful. The, you know, these normal things that you can do in a city where you can do backblaze and online backups and pull things, those solutions aren't as possible. To mail things to where we are currently is a couple days added to your normal shipment timeframes for Canada already. So Amazon Prime in urban Canada is two days kind of shipping, that's the fast one. Out here, that becomes like two weeks. And I accept that, and that's where I was willing to drive a day to go find a solution. The closest one I found was someone two provinces over a 10 hour drive to go get one and... Hey, Dustin. Yeah, I figured it'd be easier to just get you on the phone yesterday instead of trying to like communicate this via text because I'm like, this is exactly what the Craigslist scams sound like. <laughs> hey, I need that thing really bad. Just mail it to me. <laughs> um, the shipping came out to like 212. So okay. yeah, it was basically what it was estimated to be. So Perfect. So I've sourced my own solution that's expensive, but I think is worth it. I'm on the warranty pathway. 
with some back and forth, they now have a hold on my credit card place. They're sending an advanced unit. It's coming from the States. Hopefully it comes soon. And I might've messed with the space-time continuum of this warranty process by complaining on Twitter. And it just so happens that I know someone who has a contact at the company and he offered to make an introduction. And I feel guilty doing this because this is not an option available to everyone. Not everybody knows somebody, but I gladly accepted it because I'm in that place where I'm trying to solve my problem. An email was sent and I might get special treatment. And that is, I feel weird about that. <laughs> that is not something that's available to everyone. And that's certainly not the approach I was trying to come at first with this. Hopefully, hopefully sometime next week, videos start to upload where you'll go, aha, Levi must have access to his data again. And if not, I'll just mail hard drives from BC. That'll take five days to get here and I'll start editing again. And at the end of the day, it will, it will be fine. In your own experiences, as you try to craft a lifestyle that is flexible and works for you, if you're working with mission critical components, I encourage you to problem solve ahead of time about the negative pathways that could happen and try to develop fail safes and what you're gonna do if things go wrong. That's a, a learning lesson for me in this one and I certainly will be doing a couple things different in the future. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one and remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace. Honestly, this whole video was just an excuse for me to see how well does a fire extinguisher work. This one works really well. 10 out of 10. Would buy again.